been 12 hours and six. That's because I didn't have a lot on my mind. I didn't make your new food. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you though because I'll just feed you every couple hours and we'll make sure that you eat, still eat three times even if it wasn't, you know, every four hours. It's okay. It's all right. Calm down. You got your new better food that's higher fat protein, which means we have to eat slow. We have to eat slow. Okay, slow. There you go. You gotta count in between. Two. Okay on this. It's 25% the new food and 75 the old. Basically just a little bit of the new original corn. Still the same company, you know, it's gonna look very similar anyway. Let's fill these and enter it. Okay. Wait any longer, and the sun of it didn't get moist. So until I realized my mom was, you know, not doing good again, I thought she was just being a jerk. Of course, if we want to be honest, I'd rather that she's being a selfish jerk or selfish bitch than that she's sick again just, you know, measly three weeks after she got home. Oh, <laughs> come on. And I was, I was sick growing up and everything, and she wasn't home, and she comes home. I mean, one of the things she says to me is, is, you didn't even do the dishes. I know, Mom. I didn't do the dishes because I was sick as a dog. And the puke that I left in the toilet for you to see proves that I was sick as a dog, okay? That I'm not making it up. Did I care that she said that? Not really. What I cared about, the, truthfully, was she, I need to feed Omer in peace, okay? I need to feed Omer in peace. Every, not one time has there been where I've told her to leave me alone and I'm over here feeding Omer on the floor that I've let, let her be in the living room and she's asked me questions or talked to me or whatever. She can't help it. I need to feed Omer in peace. It's that simple, right? I deserve to feed Omer in peace. I need to feed Omer in peace. You can go into your bedroom for a half hour of your life. Even if it's four times in a day because you're home. You know, the rest of the time you're out here. And, and you know what I mean? So I told her to go in her bedroom. And again, this is when I didn't know that she was sick again. knew I was physically. I 
how would I know? It, 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 it's like a light switch. One day she's fine, the next she's not. You know? It, it's like... Anyhow. Maybe she'll snap out of it. I don't know. I, I can't. We have some dementia going on, too, so that could be it, but she's can't watch your own fall backwards in front of me and you know, and I injured myself and trying to stop her from going backwards in front of me. No. Anyhow, I just want to feed Omar in peace. It's not like she's banished to her bedroom forever. It's not like she's banished and doesn't have a radio and a TV in there, you know? Just go in your room, leave me alone, let me feed Homer in peace. When you upset me, it upsets him. He knows if I'm upset with her. He needs to eat in peace. She suddenly comes out, starts sweeping over the, now I know that it was manic, but she starts sweeping over there. I'm like, Mom! And then I'm yelling, I'm like, go back in your room! Let me feed Omar in peace. I'm, I threw up. I've been sick, nauseous all day. Omar hasn't eaten. Please, stop being so selfish. Then she's like, I had a push my over here. I have to sweep it. I don't care. You can do it in a half hour when I'm done feeding Omar. Show some consideration. Don't be so selfish. Think of Omar. You want me to have to put him to sleep? I will say that. If she's going to be that selfish, well, I'm trying to hand feed Omar in peace. You don't start sweeping around me. You don't upset me by coming out here when you, you I said to go when you're wrong. Just while I'm feeding the baby, that's all. But then she wound up, she was, she, that was Tuesday, and she stayed up all night. I don't know if she took her meds. She could say she took her meds. I found an entresto in the couch today, okay? Found an entresto in the couch. None of these meds wind up anywhere. And I found a lorazepam on the bathroom floor. None of these meds wind up anywhere. They stay in my bedroom permanently. Okay, they're always in my bedroom. Unless she doesn't take them. She, she must have taken her meds over to the couch, which she's not supposed to do. It probably was today, where she's taken just the Entresto and the Benztrophine. And she thought she took it, and instead she dropped it. I mean... She's not allowed to take her meds in the couch. She has to take them at the fucking table. I have to start watching her take her meds again. Because I don't know if she took them Tuesday night. I only know she's on enough meds to knock out a horse, yet she stayed up all night. And she's like, I slept from 12. To I'm like, Mom, you weren't even home. You didn't get home till late in the afternoon. You didn't sleep 12 to 9. And I don't even think you slept five to nine, because I remember I went in, I just don't believe it. I don't even know if she took her meds. I, she doesn't take her meds. They were gone, but does that mean she took them? Of course it doesn't. Of course it does Oh, and by the way, because I'm fucking really, really smart and aware of what's going on in this world and just in general and whatnot, exactly what I predicted would happen, ha happened. She wound up going to some parties and went from 133 to 138 weight. And her solution is she's just going to stop eating, you know? Because she's not able to grasp the concept that you cannot be thin. No one can be thin on Zyprexa unless they starve themselves, you know? I'm, I'm just sickened. I'm sickened. She winds up hospitalized again. They're going to kill her, you know? It's like... thing is, 
I was so happy, so happy, but she didn't have to be sent away. Last time I tried to get her in the actual hospital part, it's hard to get that. Usually you have to be sent somewhere. And I wasn't able to before because they had bed spell, and they could still have bed spell, you know. But it's, it's convenient. It doesn't make her feel like she's been sent somewhere. She just feels like she's moved to another floor, in quotations. And even though she's not, it's a mental hospital. It's just a mental hospital within a hospital. That's all. Maybe all the hospitals have that. I don't, all I know is she's had a, she usually can't get in that. But anyway, but the doctors in there were arrogant fucks. I've already told you about that. They were arrogant as all hell. Acting like my mom has to be medicated to Kingdom Come. You know, your mom, your mom didn't ask to be mentally ill, and her mental wellness is more important than her being slim and trim and any number of things. Said. I'm trying to get her with someone new, but since it went, we went through the whole thing, waiting months before, and then we have to start all over again. That's how it goes. It's a waiting list. You have to start all over again. Unfortunately, when I heard back from that other place that we waited months to hear back from, my mom was, we couldn't bring her to someone new when she was trying to see what's going to happen with her or to try to keep her out of the hospital or, or whatever. I don't know. I, I don't know anything anymore. I just know you can't bring her to someone new when she was like that, when she's out of her mind. She's not even going to go with someone new. She's out of her mind, you know. It's like, and we have to start all over now. But it's more important than ever. Like I said, even if a brand new psychiatrist keeps her on the same crap, that brand new psychiatrist I will at least have a relationship with. I will at least be able to, since I live with my mom, right? I'm her healthcare proxy, I'm her only family member, and I live with her, I'm a partial caregiver. You know, not someone who just, you know, the psychiatrist in the hospital loved my mom's current psychiatrist because he went along with anything she says. He wants her drug to Kingdom Come too, because like Joe and I were talking about today, Joe was working from home today. Sometimes he can work from home, sometimes he has to go into work. I reached him when he could talk to me, and he was willing to talk to me. And, and, and you know, it's not their loved one. It's not their loved one. They don't give a fuck. They don't give one flying fuck what happens to my mother. That's why they always think you should be on more, more meds. Over by my bed because even when he's over on the other side where my bureau is he still needs a heater so that doesn't make a difference and now I can put pillows there he's balanced between the wall and my bed but the reason I really did is because he's blocking my bureau you know what I mean I can't get into the bottom drawer of my bureau my dresser and I can't easily get into the second drawer and that's annoying so now that he's not in the laundry room, I can put some of my stupid plastic containers in the laundry room. They don't have anything important in them anyway. They don't have anything I use. It's just crap. Like we all in this life have crap that we keep, even though we don't actually use it, but we don't want to throw it away. good because now I won't have to get up if he's crying. I can just reach over and comfort him. And I just learned this now with him thinking about this. I can sit on my bed at my leisure and relax. Still pet him in his carrier. Because in calm him down. Because 
I couldn't stand it because he kept crying and crying because he couldn't get up. Instead of just accepting, he can't get up and go to sleep, right? So finally, I just had him sleeping with me last night for a while. And then he gets agitated. His dementia kicks in and he doesn't want to sleep with me. He'll do it for a little bit. But then he gets agitated, see? And then at some point, I had to put in the earplugs because I, I couldn't take it. I have to live too or I'm going to, you know. BM, BO, you know, I'm not, not seriously, but you know what I mean, I'm just, I, I had to put my earplugs in and take the chance that he'll still be alive and not hurt or whatever when I wake up. I also had forgotten to put my mom's meds out and she knocked on my door and woke me up when I didn't have earplugs in, okay. And then I find her and Tresto in the couch, so there you go. She obviously did what I tell her not to do. I have to watch her take her meds from now on. Which basically means I'll have to, even if I try not to be staying up so late or set my alarm to get up, have her not take her meds so early either. It's not, she does, not like she has to take her meds at 5 or 6 in the morning, even if she's up at that time. She can take them at 8, you know. There's no reason not to. She takes them at 9 at night. She can take them at 8 in the morning. She always used to take him at five or six when she got up just to get it out of the way, but she doesn't have to do that. Especially if I have to watch her take him now because she'll take him over to the couch and then I'll find him later in the couch. And he was like, don't tell her you told me about of course I wouldn't tell her that. I'm not, I, I, I have a right to say it, but I'm not going to, you know, she's not going to know that I said it. The fact is, I wouldn't be saying it, wouldn't be saying it had she not nearly fallen backwards in front of me, okay? That's the whole point. The whole point was not her not being able to get herself clean or me having to clean the whole bathroom. I have to clean it better, actually. Um, at some point, I did get it disinfected. That's not the point. The point is her not keeping herself safe, and I'm trying to help her because she doesn't even realize it, and she'll she'll just go to, you know what I mean? She would have gone to bed and not been able to do that. And it's awful, and it's heartbreaking. I used to say, you know, didn't I? I used to say, no way, but I can't go to nursing home. That can't happen. That just cannot happen. And I was adamant about that, okay? Now, you know, I witnessed last night. I'm not a nurse. I can't take care of my mother. Take care of my mom in a lot of ways, not like that. Okay. They injured my knee. I could have been seriously injured. They, you know, trying to stop my mom from going backwards. I could have fallen into the tub and gotten sick. You know what I mean? Then you could say, well, maybe you shouldn't have had her go in, in there. Okay, she can hold on to a goddamn bar. I didn't want her to go to bed with crap all over her and she wasn't able to get it off. What am I supposed to do? I did never go in at first. I'm like, here's a face cloth, scrub yourself. And she couldn't do it. And then that wasn't going to do anything when she, you know, then I'm watching her, she's going to get a UTI. Then I'm like, the only way to do that, even a face cloth went through that, we've got to, we've got to, you know, hose her down. Get her nice and squeaky clean. Then it took her about 15 minutes. I wouldn't help her put her pajamas on. It took her about 15 minutes to get her pajamas on. And then she felt was out like a light. Unfortunately, this all happened when, you know, it wasn't the middle of the night. Okay, I just want to tell you that. It wasn't the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, I might not even realize what was going on. It was after she'd taken her meds, but it was not in the middle of the night, which means, you know, when she really is like a zombie. 
fact is, though, if she can't keep herself safe on the meds she's on, she's on too much meds. She's over-medicated. walking around with her shorts down by her feet. I'm like waiting for a horror thing to happen, waiting for, you know. I'm like, Mom, take off your shorts and your underwear and whatever, okay? You're gonna trip. You're gonna trip. Take them off. And the last resort was having her go in the shower, very briefly. Never imagined she'd not, she'd not have self-preservation and let go of the bar. I mean, she just doesn't think she's going to fall backwards. Neither did I. But again, that could have been really bad. Could have been really bad with me seriously injured, falling into the goddamn tub trying to save my mother. It's not a joke. Just because I showed you the cut right there, okay, and you know it doesn't look that bad, it doesn't matter. Because what happened was I'm standing up, hosing my mom down, getting her nice and clean, my heart breaking and then suddenly she start she's fall, she's not starting to fall backwards she's falling backwards all of her hundred and um thirty pounds okay and then thirty eight pounds or whatever so to stop her from falling backwards I had to use all my strength and grab onto her and I felt it and I slammed if you can see that into the tub because it was instinct it was a split split second reaction okay and this is hurting me and it's feeling a little weird but you know hopefully it's all right it's all i could ever say in this life right oh hopefully it's all right hopefully i'm all right I could have fallen into the tub and been permanently injured and whatnot because, you know, just trying to help my mom not be going out in public and having shit all over her and, you know, not even realizing it. Because I said, can you see it's all down your leg? No, I can't see it. Like, plus, I don't want her getting a UTI either. So, I can't be, I'm not omniscient. I'm not fucking omniscient, people. You know, would I ever imagine, you know, I hold on to that goddamn bar for dear life sometimes. That bar is our safety. You know, you don't let go of it. It reminds me, it remi you know what it reminded me of? Exactly. When we were on the MBTA, when we were on the train that time I told you years ago, and I said to her, don't let, this was years ago, don't let go of the bar. Whatever you do, we were packed in like sardines. Don't let go of the bar, right? I instructed her ahead of time, don't let go of the bar. And what does she do? She lets go of the bar for no reason at all. The train lurches. She's going to fall backwards into everybody, into all the people. But again, I instinctively held her. I, I instinctively held her, and she didn't fall backwards, but she would have. And she's like, you saved me. I told you not to let go of the goddamn bar. <sighs> saved you, goddamn. <sighs> you get my draft? Catch my draft, people. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? In the nature of her illness, she'll just be, when I say, you know, I, if I say anything, I don't want to talk about that. That could have been bad. Remember when I lunged for my mother to stop her literally from falling backwards. Just because there's a little flimsy shower chair, that doesn't mean you're going to fall into the shower chair. You can fall into the shower chair and tip over, okay? Come on, let's get real. When I stopped her from falling backwards, I wasn't holding on to anything. You understand? I could have easily lost my grip, fallen into the tub, 
instead of just slamming my fucking knee into the fucking bottom, the tub top, you know, that sharp part where the shower doors are. Okay. That was too close for comfort. What happened last night? You know, of course, nobody wants nobody. You understand? Even if my mom belongs in a nursing home, I told you she has such a spirit about her. She just, nobody wants to think about her being in a nursing home. Nobody. You know, it's like, of course not. And her illness causes her to think nothing's wrong with her. You know, she thinks she can't wind up in, she just got out of six weeks in the hospital and thinks she can't wind up back in there. She thinks she can't wind up in a nursing home too. It's very, very sad. said she was good for, what, three weeks? When she came home three weeks ago? Good for three weeks, and then I personally believe she's over-medicated, but it also could be just she's been on it for too long. She's been on these psych meds for decades, and she used to only have to be on prolixin and nothing else. The older she's gotten, she's needed more, you know? Because the doctor's like, you know, they get older and they need even more to, yeah. You don't want to talk to me about your fucking shit that I can't even say out here, okay? You who know me, you know exactly how I feel about this crap. How Joe feels as well. the yummiest thing in the universe, Holmes. You are not spoiled, that's for sure. You will eat anything. I told that the church woman that I put the, the stuff on Omer's, the powder on Omer's food, I think I told her that. It must have been her, what else did I tell her? And, and she was like, she was like, he eats it? I'm like, yeah, he's not fussy. Homer is not fussy. He'll eat anything. I think it'll be better with him right by my bed. Again, I won't have to get up when I'm a, like a zombie, you know. I could trip and fall just to put him right side up if he's in a bad position. And then literally a minute or two later, he's crying again. <laughs> now I could just reach over and comfort him. If I reach over and comfort him, I might even be able to pet him to sleep, you know. I can reach over in my bed and keep him in the position where he doesn't feel like he can't get up, and then he'll just go to sleep. So it'll work out better. I'll have to move him when I need to make the bed. Remember, I have new sheets coming. 